stand for the gospel lesson. <clears throat> our gospel lesson for today, which also serves as our sermon text this morning, from John chapter 14, verses 23 through 29. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away, and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ our Savior, what is it that troubles you as you gather in God's house today? Of what are you afraid? Illness and failing health? Getting older? Or being helpless? Are you troubled with the rising crime rate and afraid that it might show itself to you in the form of a vandal or a thief in your home? Are you afraid that the air that you breathe, the water that you drink, or the food that you eat might be contaminated with some unseen pollutant or virus? Are you afraid your children won't love you or that your parents might embarrass you? Are you troubled that your company might go belly up? Are you afraid that the stock market might collapse? Your retirement savings be lost or that you won't be able to maintain the lifestyle that you enjoy right now? Are you troubled by unpaid bills? And afraid that might mean you might lose your house or your ability to, to take care of yourself. Are you troubled by school? Or your grades? Or the loans that you've had to take out that now weigh heavily on your shoulders to, to finance that education? Are you afraid people might find out what you've done in your past? Or troubled about what you might do in the future? Do thoughts of death trouble you? Or are you afraid to go on living? Boy, there's just so many fears and, and troubles that can rob us of peace and sour our outlook on life. Peace is kind of an interesting thing. Peace is something for which everyone is searching, but seems to be so fleeting. People search for peace everywhere, yet seems like it's impossible to find. There's no peace at home. Phones ringing off the hook, text messages to answer, schedules that are, are filled to overflowing. There's stress and tension between members of the family. We barely have time to eat and sleep, much less see each other in passing. There's no peace at work with the threat of job loss and budget cuts. Increasing workloads with diminishing pay. Those added responsibilities you really don't want to have to take on, but have no choice if you want to keep the job that you have. <laughs> then there's our world. There's no peace in our world. Wars and rumors of war continue all around us. Natural disasters we hear about constantly. Political, economic unrest, 
the acceptance of any kind of morality that's out there, the rejection of God, the opposition that, that those face who stand for the biblical definition of morality or life or marriage, increasingly difficult, uh, uh, how increasingly difficult it is to be a confessing Christian in our world today, where there are just so many things that can, can trouble us and, and cause us fear. Would it surprise you if I told you that our troubled hearts and, and, and the fear that we experience all come from the same place? Would it surprise you to hear me say there is a peace that you can have despite all that is happening to you and around you? That's what God wants you to know this morning. He wants you to know the peace that only He can give. A peace that is so different from what our world thinks of in, in terms of peace. A peace that truly calms troubled hearts and removes fear. What God offers you today is that peace only Jesus can give. Now Jesus spoke these words of our text on Monday, Thursday. Before he and his disciples left that upper room to go out to the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was preparing his disciples for the events of the next few days and Preparing them for his departure, which, which was not that far away. Specifically in our text, Jesus was reminding his disciples what it meant to be a disciple. When Jesus left this earth, they were no longer going to be able to see him visibly. But that didn't mean that Jesus was abandoning them. He would still be there to, to guide them in his word. They would still see him through the eyes of faith. Therefore, they could show their love for Jesus by keeping his teaching and obeying his commandments. See, love for God and, and obedience to his commands always go hand in hand. There are just some things that, that are always there with one another. Like when you have breath, you have life. When you have fire, you have heat. When you have love for Jesus, you have obedience to his commands. Jesus promised that those who display their love for him by obeying his commands have the promise of the Father's love. That they will be part of his family. That he and the Father will, will set up their home with them. And he also reminds them the opposite of that. Is those who don't obey His commands, so that they don't love Him. And those who don't love Jesus don't have the, the promise of the Father's love. They live only in fear of His wrath and anger. Well, this is a rather troubling thought, because this is an impossible task. Who of us can say that we fully kept God's commands, or fully kept and guarded His teaching at all times? That's what produces fear inside of us. Not one of us can say that we have fully shown love to Jesus in every, at all times and in every way. Not one of us here can say that we have fully kept to his teaching and shown love in every thought, word, and action. And that's what causes fear as these troubles and difficulties come upon us. Because that fear, that, that trouble in our heart comes from the thought, maybe this bad thing is happening to me because God's getting back at me for the things that I've done. Or maybe this trouble is coming my way because God has left me all alone because of the things that I've done. Or maybe the worst is going to happen to me, I'm sure of it, because I know the things that I've done. Or I have to solve this problem all by myself, because God's turned His back on me, certainly because of the things that I've done. You start to get the point. 
The fact that we haven't shown love to Jesus and, and fully obeyed his commands leads us to think that maybe he's abandoned us or, or separated himself from us or is getting back at us for that. Now, now, truth be told, we have every reason to be afraid and troubled from this standpoint. That is exactly what we deserve. I, I know that's a sobering thought, but that's the truth. We deserve to have God turn his back on us and abandon us eternally because of all the times we haven't obeyed his commands. We deserve to face God's wrath and punishment eternally in hell because of that. Deep down, we know that in our thoughts. And that's what causes such fear and trouble in our hearts as we face these times. But friends, as Jesus reminded his disciples, so he reminds us today. He didn't leave this world to abandon his disciples or because he was upset and mad at them. In fact, it was his very leaving of this world that made peace possible, especially as we face the trials and troubles of life. You see, the peace that Jesus gives is so, so different from the peace of this world. It doesn't depend on the harmony of nations or the tranquility of families. It doesn't depend. It isn't as, as fragile as the last temper flare-up or, or the next grab for power. It isn't disturbed by plans that have gone awry. Even Jesus' arrest and trial and torture and crucifixion couldn't affect it. Because the peace that Jesus gives is the peace of heart and mind from knowing that your sins are forgiven. See, the peace that Jesus gives comes from knowing that his life, his death, and his resurrection from the grave paid for those sins. And are what make you right before God. And what bring you into his family under God's protection and care. The peace of Jesus is the peace of knowing God's promise that as his children, no one can snatch you out of his hands. And nothing can separate you from his love, no matter what it is that you face on this earth. The peace that Jesus offers is the peace of knowing that he has prepared and ready to room for you in the mansion of heaven. For you to enjoy eternity with him when life on this earth is over. And the peace that Jesus offers you was made possible by that victory that Jesus won on Easter Sunday. You see, this is why we, we, we talked about the fact that Easter changes everything. Because that victory that Jesus won as he rose from the grave and conquered death and the devil that was given to us through faith affects every single part of our life. This peace that Jesus offers to us calms our troubled hearts and makes our fearful hearts confident. It certainly is a peace that passes all understanding, but one that sustains us in all situations. It's a peace that reminds us that, that God made us right with Him, established a relationship with us that nothing can bring. You see, we have no reason to be afraid, no reason to be troubled. We have the peace of that God offers it. A peace Jesus alone can give. A peace that nothing can take away from us. Now Jesus told this to his disciples before all of the events that were going to happen did happen. He did that so they could face those events with peace and confidence. Of course, we know in the throes of the difficulty and the challenges, the disciples had a hard time calling to mind all of the things that, that Jesus had told them. So he also made them a promise he was going to send a helper, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit would help them by 
reminding them of all the things that he had said. We know that it was on Pentecost. The Holy Spirit was given to them in a very special way. And what a change that made in those disciples. Before Pentecost, the disciples were scared, afraid, troubled. Yet after they had been given the Holy Spirit, they were bold and courageous. They were full of peace as they stood in the temple courts and before the Sanhedrin, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus and seeking to convict the people of their sin. That peace came from the Holy Spirit reminding them of everything that Jesus had said. That peace came from being confident of the relationship God had established with them and certain that nothing could take it away. Even though these disciples faced persecution throughout the rest of their ministry, all but John were martyred for their faith. Inside, they still held tightly to that peace, the peace that only Jesus can give. And friends, God shares these words with us so that we can have that same peace as we face the troubles and, and trials of this earth. And he also promises the very same Holy Spirit to, to remind us of all the things that Jesus has said to us. We do well to remember that Jesus never promised that we'd have peace here on this earth, an earthly peace here on this earth. In fact, what Jesus told us was just the opposite. In this world, you will have trouble. As he talked about the end times, Jesus told us there would be wars and rumors of war that we would face. He told us there would be earthquakes and famines and other natural disasters and that the love that people had toward one another would grow cold. Jesus told us there would be persecution his people would have to face like the opposition we face today from the godless and the morally progressive people in our world. All of that's fulfillment of what Jesus said, that in this world you will have trouble. But he also promised to leave us peace, his peace, that could go with us as we face those troubles. All of your sin has been fully and completely paid for in Jesus. Your hell has been paid and your sin atoned. And the same Jesus who did all of that for you is the one who is now ruling on heaven's throne with all power and authority, working all things for the benefit of his church. That same Jesus is the one who made the promise that nothing can separate you from his love. He's the same Jesus who promised never to allow it more than what you can bear. Who promised to hold you as you face whatever you face. He promised that he would always provide a way out. It's the same Jesus who promised that he was going to heaven to prepare a place for you. And then promised to come back and take you to be with him one day. You see, that's what gives us peace, confidence in what Jesus has done, what Jesus has promised, and where we will go because of Jesus. Maybe a good example of this peace at work in the lives of God's people can be seen in Horatio Spofford. Maybe you don't know that name offhand, but you probably know one of the hymns that he wrote. <coughs> it is well with my soul. Horatio Spofford was a man who would appear to have everything. He was a lawyer and a, a businessman who lived in Chicago in the 1800s. He had a wife and five children. Seemed to have it all, everything that would bring earthly peace. Until his worldly peace started falling to pieces. It started with the death of his four-year-old son from pneumonia. Then the great Chicago fire wiped out all of his real estate holdings, leaving him bankrupt. So that his family was taken care of, he sent his wife and four daughters on a ship back to England. But as that transatlantic steamer neared the, neared the coast of England, it was struck by another ship and sunk. His wife was saved, but 
All four of his daughters drowned. Mr. Spofford jumped on the first ship that he could to go be at his wife's side. And as his boat approached that spot where the wreck had occurred, he stood out on the deck one starry night and looked to the heavens. He couldn't see Jesus. But by faith he held tight to him. That night he went into his cabin and wrote those famous words, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot you have taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Don't be afraid. Don't let your hearts be troubled. It is well with your soul. You too can stand firm in the midst of trouble and even rejoice in tribulation because you have been given a priceless gift for the work of the Holy Spirit. You have the peace that God offers you through Jesus. The peace only Jesus can give.